Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Today we are going to look at this 2004 Land Cruiser. This is a 100 series. Uh, it's currently been up to eighteen and a half thousand dollars. It's got four days left, and it is in this uh, yeah beautiful kind of goldish beige color. Uh, but yeah, so this is a 2004 Land Cruiser. Let's go down on the the details here on the right. Uh, so it's located in Wrightstown, Pennsylvania. It's got twenty two thousand miles. That is extremely low. Yeah, the paint is uh, Sonora Gold Pearl. It's got ivory leather uh, upholstery on the interior, heated power adjustable front seats, rear entertainment system, rear view camera, which you'd get on a 2004. And yeah, we'll see if it's got, there aren't a ton of options for these years. Uh, we'll see if it's got the, um, yeah, the uh, side airbags as we go through the photos. But yeah, that's low mileage. Uh, yeah, this, if it all checks out, it could be, it could be a new, a new record. So We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if it'll get over the original MSRP, and yeah, hopefully we see a sticker for that. Uh, let's see. Going through the details here on the left, the description. Uh, so it's finished in Sonora Gold Pearl. It's got a locking center differential like all of these have, and it's got the rear seat entertainment center. So this uh, 100 series is offered on dealer consignment with a window sticker, the owner's manual, a clean Carfax report, and a clean Pennsylvania title. Uh, so everything else is normal there. Came with the roof rack and the running boards. I kind of wish the roof rack, it being in black, is a little out of place compared to the, uh, you know, the kind of like the silverish, um, you know, belt line here, belt molding, and um, you know, the bottom trim. But yeah, you know, let's go through this. It's just got regular um, highway tires on it in the factory size, and yeah, everything looks normal. Yeah, pretty mint looking front seat. But let's see. So we've got, yeah, rear, rear entertainment screen with two sets of headphones. And then, yeah, in the interior, remember these dashes they updated in, I believe, 2004, maybe 2003, um, to kind of this, like, yeah, more bulbous style. And it's just got a little bit, you know, different front grill. But it's got the navigation system. And, yeah, these ones, it didn't come with AHC. So, yeah, we'll see the little pocket there for, you know, storing Almost nothing. <laughs> uh, let's see. So the digital odometer indicates 22,000 miles, of, of which approximately 100 were added under current ownership. Uh, we don't really, it doesn't really say how long they had it. So we'll take a look at the Carfax report. It doesn't really say how long they've had it, but uh, apparently they've been yeah, just hanging on to it. And let's see. Anything else out of the ordinary here? No. Uh, so yeah, the, the motor in this is a yeah, 4.7 liter, uh, two UZ dash FE motor. Uh, it's got a timing belt. Um, so it was rated at the factory as this, you know, per listed here, 235 horsepower and 320 foot pounds of torque. And the oil was most certainly recently changed in May of 2023. Uh, the undercarriage looks pretty good. A little, little something, something, but yeah, pretty minor. It looks like, and there's the original sticker showing 62813. So we'll see. Uh, I was originally delivered to Schottenkirk Toyota in Quincy, Illinois. And yeah, there's all of your uh, factory equipment and options. Uh, so just, yeah, we'll get into that there in a second. Let's go ahead and look at the Carfax report. Uh, it looks like it shows no accidents or other damage unless registration in Illinois and Pennsylvania and a gap between entries is present from 2008 to 2021. Uh, not unheard of for Carfax. Um, sometimes, especially, you know, older vehicles. Yeah, it just didn't. Service wasn't always uh, yeah, registered or reported in the Carfax. So uh, we've got six miles in, in Illinois, uh, 11 miles. And then, yeah, it looks like the mileage was mostly put on. Oh, we don't actually know. It just jumps. <laughs> so yeah, straight up 2008. Next entry is 2021 with 21,000 miles. So um, we will want to verify just, you know, with it being low mileage, we'll take a look and see if we see any signs that, um, you know, it's got more mileage than what it does. Um, given still that it was used in Illinois, we do need to be sensitive to corrosion issues. I've seen extremely low mileage Land Cruisers um, come from places like the Rust Belt have super low miles and they're still just really gross underneath. So, uh, and then also with this one being such low mileage, I mean, this would, you would consider, not that like it's particularly rare, but, um, you know, a 
this is collector grade. It's low enough mileage that that's going to be the crowd that's going to probably be bidding on this. So if you're looking for a low mileage Land Cruiser, yeah, this one's probably going to be out of your out of your budget. Yeah, so we're going to be looking for signs that yeah maybe there's you know parts of it have been repainted. Obviously, pay special attention to the undercarriage. Just look for those types of things. I'm looking just for defects given the low mileage, and then also just confirming that the mileage is you know, original and what it is. Uh, there isn't anything in the vehicle history report. So yeah, we'll just jump straight into the photos here. And yeah, right off the bat, this looks pretty good. Good gaps between the, um, between at least the lower valence and the headlights. So there is a little bit of a gap difference between the hood and the fenders. The driver's side is a little bit more open, at least from this perspective. We'll hopefully get a better straight on photo here to confirm this, but the, yeah, the gap on the passenger side seems pretty tight. I maybe note a little color difference it could just be a reflection but we'll you know between the hood and the fender we'll pay attention to that looking down the side of the vehicle yeah that all looks just fine wheels and tire those look good there as well um yeah I mean, this looks just like straight out of the brochure this looks phenomenal <laughs> um yeah color looks good down the side nothing jumping out at me there the gaps look good Again, like I said, it's kind of a, sh I don't know, maybe it's not so bad. Initially, I thought that I wish this would be silver, but maybe it's okay that it's all in black. I mean, even with 20,000 miles, by the way, I've seen these, you know, in the rockers here, I've seen them rust out with that low of mileage. Uh, they, you know, they pop up on Craigslist or on a dealer's website and, you know, sure enough. But yeah, this looks, this looks pretty good from at least, you know, 30, 40, 50 feet away. And yeah, these photos, like what great lighting. This, these look like, yeah, brochure photos. Yeah, regarding brochures, I've posted videos for the uh, 1999 and the 2021 Land Cruiser. I hope to yeah, fill in the rest of the years with the brochures. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting to go through those and yeah, see. Uh, one thing we talk about on the channel, especially if you're looking for a vehicle that you know is like listed online, if you can see the name of a dealer, like whether it's on an emblem like this or a sticker, um, that can help you figure out where it's from. So like if this one you know popped up on my local Craigslist, you know here in like California or wherever, and like you saw that name and you know they're advertising it you know locally yeah, you would you know maybe be cautious and wary you know recognizing and googling it and seeing that it was from yeah the rust belt um that can save you like running a carfax it can and again i wish the dealers wouldn't put this see how it's like off like it's not level uh it's so aggravating so bumper tailgate hatch that all looks good uh the 2004 obviously has the you know the kind of the clear style lights here in the back but not the updated design that the 2006 and 7 got and yeah great lighting for these photos this is fantastic uh just look like it's straight out of a brochure yeah, very, very nice, but I'm itching to look at the details. We don't have, we've only got 154 photos. There's not, you know, there's not tons. Um, let's see. So that's about as good as we can get, you know, straight on, or at least what we've seen yet. Um, yeah, those gaps, they, I know, they seem fine one side to the other. Um, and then, you know, these fog lights, they are plastic. They do tend to fade. Uh, they look crystal clear in this case. This vehicle has likely been stored indoors for its short 22,000 miles. A little scup there on the front bumper. But yeah, this uh, yes, Sonora Gold Pearl, uh, this is code actually 4R3 for Romeo 3. Uh, this was found on, yeah, at least for the 100 series, 2003 through 2007 model years. Um, yeah, paint's shiny up top. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, a couple of scuffs there on the little um, yeah, side trim there. Yeah, looking looking pretty mint here. Um, yeah, not even a lot of fade on this plastic piece there. That looks pretty good. A couple little scuffs um, on the rear bumper. It looks like there's yeah, just a couple little nicks there uh, on the what the passenger side, and then another couple over over by this little reflector. All right, show me a good photo of this seam here at the bottom. I want to see that. Don't don't leave me hanging here. All right, back to the roof and then yeah back to the side yeah this all looks good uh no sign of repaint here at least on this door handle that looks good yeah uh wheels look yeah super super minty fresh that's so nice yeah looking at the the pinch weld here on the rocker panel that looks great no no signs of shenanigans there uh same thing on this uh, driver's side that looks good as well yeah, those wheels, that's nice. 
Uh, looking behind these, you know, the wheel well here, you can just see a little kind of patchy, you know, kind of surface corrosion starting. Um, yeah, it's super minor. It's just superficial. All right, moving to the interior. Yeah, the seat looks about 20 miles or 20,000 miles young. Same thing here on the side. Uh, we talked about whether or not this thing got the option for the airbags. You can see the little sticker there on the uh, driver's seat. Looks like it did. And yeah, that interior looks great. Uh, looking at the door jam here, no signs of paintless dent repair. We've got a, uh, a VIN sticker there. Uh, everything seems to be in place. Uh, carpets here in the front. It could use a little bit of a vacuum, but otherwise that looks good and clean. Uh, nice focus of the house in the background. They <laughs> should have cut that photo out. Uh, steering wheel looks like it's in great shape. I'm sure we'll get another photo, but yeah, 22,455 miles. Uh, these photos were obviously taken, you know, with uh, about 10 miles in between them. Looks like the nav works and yeah, shifter handle leather looks good. So all of like the normal and yeah, the plastic here in the seatbelt receptacle that is yeah, clean and fresh. So those are like the, you know, three main besides like the dash, but the dash in these 100 series, I've never seen one crack. Uh, those are kind of the main three things that you can do to you know, tell or look at to tell whether or not a vehicle is you know, parked outside and it's in the sun. All right, looking at the rear door here on the driver's side, that looks good. The seam sealer all the way around the edge looks nice. Uh, the wood, you know, paneling looks good. Second row looks good. Headliner looks great. Look at that leather. Yeah, get some conditioner on that and keep it nice. Yeah, so this is a, a good case for a line cruiser to really... Yeah, to really take care of. Um, I'd be surprised if this mesh, that you know, the netting here on the back of the driver's seat, yeah, when you pull whatever's in there out, um, you know, isn't yeah totally, um, you know, extended. So yeah, you might want to look at tight tightening that. Carpet here in the second row looks good. Um, passenger rear door card looks good. You can see a VIN sticker there. No signs of paintless dent repair. Yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. I'm trying to remember if the, I don't think the 100 series had a VIN sticker here. We'll we'll take a look at another vehicle just to double check that, uh, whether or not we got VIN stickers on the rear quarter panels. But moving to the cargo area, you've got the subwoofer, that little fabric looks good. We didn't ever get a photo of the um, passenger front door card. So that might be worth just asking about uh, if you're interested in this vehicle. But carpets there in the third row, that all looks good. It does have the rear AC system, so there's a you know big kind of HVAC unit back behind here. Uh, they've got the little covers here for these seats just kind of hanging out on the sides. Um, those can be yeah, stowed on the underside of the seats. All that looks good. But anyway, back to the rear AC. You can see vents here, and then there's a separate control there. It's kind of a, in a weird spot. It's only accessible to the third row occupants. Um, yeah, whatever. All right, rear hatch. Yeah, that looks good. That kind of normal telltale for corrosion here on the rear hatch. That that looks good, at least from this distance. Uh, moving to the engine bay, we've got a vent sticker on the far side. Uh, everything looks to be in order under here. Radiator looks good as far as color goes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's see the vent sticker. So we didn't get a photo to be able to see the vent sticker on the um, driver's side. So that would be, again, something you should be interested in. In if you're purchasing this vehicle and look at this color like this looks very much like the new um the Sonora Gold looks like the you know the new color on the Lexus GX 550 that they're kind of pitching but all right moving to the undercarriage yeah not a lot of photos at least yet um very superficial corrosion I mean this is stuff that you would if you know especially to maintain the condition of this you you would want to you know get after that and keep it super nice but it doesn't look like anything injurious has happened yet um just kind of minor superficial stuff. Yeah, I feel like we're getting repeat photos over and over here. But yeah, just super minor stuff. But yeah, just take a little wire brush to that and yeah, get it cleaned up. All right, there's the original sticker. Yeah, $62,813. Uh, here are the options. Let me zoom in here so you can see those just to, you know, just kind of see what's there. Um, so yeah, roof roof rack and running board package cost yeah five sixty five navigation system three thousand three hundred fifty yeah I, I wish more of these came without that uh, aluminum wheels were 80, 80 bucks uh, uh, yep and then yeah curtain side airbags for the first and second row six hundred fifty bucks that's a good add on uh, two thousand bucks for the rear seat entertainment again yeah you could get 
basically for things that would make this vehicle more than five thousand dollars more uh, valuable today. Um, yeah, you could have paid five thousand less and yeah, come up with something that costs you know basically has ten thousand more value. <laughs> uh, anyway, and then convenience package that included all of the normal kind of add-ons: rear window deflector, cargo net, first aid kit, etc. So there you go. Um, yeah, tremendous vehicle, great condition, uh, just a little like undercarriage rust, really. Uh, let's jump real quick and verify with some other 100 series that um, they do or do not have the Vinsicker on that rear quarter panel. And yeah, so we'll take a look at a couple real quick. All right, so here's a photo from yeah a recent 2003. This is the other um, kind of comparable that we've got in recent history. This one had you know 45,000 miles, and yeah, just looking at this uh, rear quarter panel, yeah, no VIN sticker there. So, um, I, it might have only been the 80 series. Um, the VIN sticker for the 100 series for that rear quarter panel uh, is actually down, let, let me get a side profile, it's actually down below here. Um, so if you were to yeah, look underneath this little wing of the bumper, yeah, you would see that VIN sticker there on each side, one for each side. So, uh, so really the only drawbacks I see in the presentation is that we didn't see a photo of the passenger door card and we didn't see a VIN sticker for this uh, driver panel. Um, if I were interested in this vehicle, if I were bidding on it, um, I would get those photos. Um, I would also just get more undercarriage photos. There could always be more. Uh, a good question needs to be asked about the timing belt. Um, so let's take a little peek in the listing. No mention yet in the comments for the timing belt. It certainly isn't due on mileage, but it would be due on time. That, that I don't know. It's probably fine, but it's something that I would, I think, want the peace of mind. It those timing belt jobs, they're not particularly hard. Um, they involve taking a lot of, you know, pieces off the truck, but yeah, I, there's, there's very little that can go wrong. Again, if you are <laughs> pretty competent, um, at that job. So yeah, regarding price, you know, just looking at some of those comps. So this is that, um, 2003, the, the black one that I was just showing the photos of that one sold for 50,000. Um, again, the one we're looking at, this 2004 in Sonora Gold, this is less miles, um, although things have kind of come down a little bit. So I think 50,000 is probably a good benchmark for this one. Um, yeah, that, that probably seems a fair. I think we're going to go a little, well, the color kind of takes away from that a little bit. So I think, I think 50 grand is probably a good target. I do want to take a moment and say, you know, thanks to the seller for putting this up in a reserve. Um, I don't know how long they've had it. I don't know, you know, what they, what they got it for, but, oh, yeah, so the owner did pick this up in May 2023. Uh, so interesting. I'm yeah, I'm curious as to what they they picked it up for. I missed that earlier in the description. Um, so with that being said, yeah, they could they could be in it like pretty far, or perhaps they yeah somehow got it for like a screaming deal. Either way, they're going no reserve. So you know, thank you to, for doing that. Uh, it's it's great to see this thing. You know, it's going to sell and it'll sell at the price that it'll sell at, which is just fantastic. I I don't see a whole lot wrong with this one. Um, besides just really not having, you know, those, those couple photos, the little undercarriage rest and, and again, that's all super light and then just not having a ton of like maintenance, you know, documented for it. Um, but it just doesn't have a lot of miles, you know, besides just needing to do oil changes over the years. So yeah, it would, it would be fun to own a time capsule like this. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to, for purposes of kind of guessing a price, I'm going to say 50 grand. Um, I don't think, I think the market's kind of cooled down a little bit on these, but you know, I've been surprised. Um, but yeah, we just saw the heritage edition go for about 10,000 less than what I thought it was going to go for. So, um, certain things are cooling down and we'll see if this is one of them. So anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and yeah, have a good day.